Welcome back everyone to West Explains Best. We're gonna be doing a CUDA worksheet tutorial on solving rational equations. So these are a little bit uh, more difficult than expressions because now we have an equal sign and now we need to solve for the variable. Now, it says right here in the instructions, solve each equation, remember to check for extraneous solutions. Now, what does that mean? It means that we're gonna have to look to see which answers, which uh, values for each variable will give us undefined solutions. Okay, so that's something we have to be mindful of. Let's go ahead and take a look at number one and see what I'm talking about. Now, you'll see that we have one over six K squared, one over three K squared, and one over K as the three fractions here. Look that we have a K in the denominator. Anytime you have a denominator with a variable, denominator with variable, this means we need to check extraneous yes, solutions every time. So what does that mean? Well, what we're gonna do is a denominator with a variable, we have three of them, we're gonna set each one of these equal to zero. Because why? Well, if we have and I don't like that yellow, so I'm gonna change it to purple in just a second. If we have one over zero, then that is gonna be undefined. That cannot be one of our solutions. So whatever caused this denominator to go to zero would be an extraneous solution. It's, it doesn't count, it, it, it's not valid. So what would cause it to go to zero? Well, in order to find that out, we set the denominator equal to zero and then we solve for the variable. So we get k squared equals zero, and then we take the square root of both sides. So we're gonna get k equals zero. Let's check that. Now, how does that happen? Well, if we were to put zero in for k squared, we get one over six times zero squared. That's the same thing as one over six times zero. That's the same thing as one over zero, undefined. And as you see here, okay, I'm gonna erase this. I hope you followed my, uh, my reasoning. If we set each one of these equal to zero, you're gonna see that we get k equals zero for all of these. So our extraneous solution is k cannot equal zero. k equals zero is gonna extraneous solution, so k cannot equal zero for our answers here. Now that we've covered how to find extraneous solutions, we're gonna go ahead and get to the solving part, so I'm gonna erase all this. Okay, and how do I do this? Well, what I need to do here is I like to multiply each one of these by the uh, greatest, the least common multiple. Well, I'm looking for what can I multiply to get rid of the denominator. So, um, if we look at 6k squared, 3k squared, and k, between the two, between all three of these, I want to eliminate, I want to cancel. Oftentimes, we're looking for the least, uh, not oftentimes, always, we wanna multiply by the least common multiple between the three of these. What do all of these go into? Which number is 6K squared a factor, 3K squared a factor, and K a factor of? That's our, that's our question. And if we look closely, we can see that 6K squared, all of these are a factor of 6K squared. So that's what I'm gonna multiply both sides of the equation by. This is a step of eliminating the fraction. So if I'm gonna break this down into steps, because I know right now you might be a little bit, little bit lost. So one, we're gonna check for extraneous solutions. I hate writing this word, extraneous solutions. We've already done that. So number two, we're gonna eliminate fractions. And how we're gonna do that, we're gonna eliminate fractions by multiplying, I'm just gonna write this simple, multiplying by the least common multiple, okay? Let me show you what that looks like and how that works. So if we multiply, let me change color here, I'm gonna change this to blue. One over six K squared equals one over three K squared minus one over K. If we multiply all three of these, by 6k squared, our identified least common multiple. Okay, we're gonna multiply each one of these. This is what happens. We're gonna have 
uh, 1 times 6k squared over 6k squared equals 6k squared times 1 over 3k squared minus 1 times 6k squared over k. I'm going to change, I should have made this blue. Um, let's see if I can change that to blue real fast. Uh, I think I can. Let's check this out. Oops, dang it. Sorry. Give me a break here. Almost done. Okay, this is going to be close enough. So basically what I did is I distribute the 6k squared to each one of these. Why do I do that? Well, now I can cancel or reduce. I can cancel this 6k squared with this 6k squared. I can cancel this 3k squared. The k squared goes away and this gets reduced to 2. And then this k eliminates with that k squared, leaving us just 6k. Once I simplify this, I get 1 equals 1 times 2, which is 2, minus 6k. See how this made it a much easier problem than what we started with? Now we just have to solve this, which is much, much easier than what we started with. How am I going to do that? I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. I get negative 1 equals negative 6k, and then I divide by negative 6, divide by negative 6. I get k equals 1 over 6 as my solution. And I have to keep in mind that um, my solution cannot be k equals 0. Okay, So I'm checking this with this. If I got k equals 0 as an answer, then it would not be a correct answer. But since I got 1 over 6, it's not 0, so it's good. It checks out. It is a uh, good solution for us because it's not 0. It's not our extraneous solution. Let's go ahead and do number two now. Okay, first step, we're gonna check for extraneous solutions. We're gonna check that at the end. Anytime it's just a variable multiplied or squared or anything like that by something, you're always gonna get it equal to zero. For example, two n squared equals zero. We divide by two, n squared equals zero. Take the square root, we get n equals zero. That's the same thing with this, n and then n squared. So n equals zero is our extraneous solution. We're gonna remember that later. So our answer cannot be equal to zero. Let's keep that in mind, but we're gonna go ahead and solve now. How do we solve? Well, we're gonna analyze the denominators and we're gonna look for the least common multiple between n squared n and two n squared. Sometimes one of the denominators will be the least common multiple. In this case, n squared and n are factors of two n squared. So that's what we're gonna do. The least common multiple is two n squared. We're gonna multiply two n squared to all terms. Let me show you what that looks like. Um, I should have used blue. Let me put blue parentheses again. So we have 1 over n squared plus 1 over n equals 1 over 2n squared. I'm going to now show you the multiplication of the 2n squared here, the 2n squared here, and then the 2n squared there. Now, let's go ahead and start reducing and canceling. This n squared is going to cancel out with that n squared. This n is going to cancel out with one of those n's. And this 2n squared cancels out completely with that guy. What's left? 2 plus 2n equals 1. So now we have a much easier problem. We're going to subtract 2, subtract 2. We get 2n equals negative 1. Divide by 2, divide by 2. We get n equals negative 1 half. Guess what? That is not 0. So this checks out as our solution. And that's the main principle of this. All of these um, are going to be fairly similar to that one. Maybe let's check out one that looks a little bit more difficult. 3 and 4 are similar to what we just did. Here we have this one. Let's check for extraneous solutions first. So we're going to set 5x equal to 0, x equal to 0. Well, obviously x equals 0. For both of these, so x cannot equal to 0. That's going to be our extraneous solution. We'll check that at the end and just in case. Let's put this up. Okay, now we're going to look for the GCF. If you want, if you don't see a, a, a fraction here, technically just put it over one, but we really don't need to worry about it when finding our GCF. We just worry about the two with denominators. In this case, our GCF is gonna be 5x. So we're gonna multiply 5x to both sides. What does that look like? Well, we have one over x equals six over 5x plus one. You can't forget about the one. And if you want, put it one over one. It doesn't really make a difference, and I'll show you why. Times 5x, times 5x, times 5x. What happens? Well, we get the x canceled with that x. We get the 5x canceled with that 5x. And this doesn't cancel at all, like I said, because it's just a number. It's just an integer, not a fraction. 
So we're going to have our final result of 1 times 5 is 5 equals uh, 6 um, plus 5x because we do 5x times 1. Now we're just going to simplify minus 6 minus 6. We get negative 1 equals 5x divided by 5 divided by 5. We get negative 1 over 5 equals x as our solution. It's not 0, which would be our extraneous solution. So we know we have a good answer there. Okay, let's go to a little bit more difficult uh, problem. We're going to go and do number 7. 7 looks tougher than 8. Than eight. So now, again, we're going to check for extraneous solutions first. We're going to set all three of these equal to 0. Now we have some business to do because we have v squared minus 5x, and we're going to set that equal to 0. Whoops, that's 5v, sorry. Set that equal to 0. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out. You're going to always have to get it into a factored form first before determining the zeros. So I get v equals 0, and then v equals 5. 5, if you put 5 in for this parentheses, it would make it go to 0. 0 in front of the parentheses would make it go to 0. So those are our two extraneous solutions for those denominators. This one's just another v equals 0, which we already counted for over here. So this is going to be our extraneous solutions to check at the end v cannot equal those two numbers. Okay, let's go ahead and erase this now. Now what we need to do is we need to multi multiply the top and bottom by the least common multiple. The least common multiple in this case is v squared minus 5v. So this one's going to be a little interesting. 5v. So let's go ahead and show it. Now, this one's not going to be as bad as you might think. So we have 1 over v plus 3v plus 12. I'm going to put that in parentheses over v squared minus 5v equals 7v minus 56. I'm going to put that in parentheses. Make this a little bit longer for each one of these. And then v squared minus 5v in the bottom. Now, I forgot to say show this. Well, I didn't forget, but this is my next step. I have to multiply this. I have to multiply v squared minus 5v and I have to multiply v squared minus 5v. I like to put it in parentheses because we're probably gonna end up canceling most of them. We're gonna cancel this with this. We're gonna cancel this with that. And this one we're not gonna cancel with. We have v squared minus 5v over v. Remember, the whole point is to cancel though. So let's put this into factored form, which is v times v minus five. Now we can cancel. We're gonna cancel this one and this one. And we're going to be left with v minus 5 uh, plus 3v plus 12 equals 7v minus 56. So not as easy as the one before, but still not that bad. I'm going to erase this to show you. Mm, okay, this is what we did, okay, just in case you saw. Um, but now we're going to combine like terms. So we're going to combine this 3v and the v, so we get 4v, and then plus 7, 12 minus 5 is 7, equals 7v minus 56. I'm going to subtract 4v from both sides. I get 7 equals 3v minus 56. I'm going to add 56 to both sides. I get 63 equals 3v, and I believe divided by 3 is going to give me 21. v equals 21. Now, check my extraneous solutions. Is it 0 or 5? It is not. So this checks out as one of our good solutions. And that's how you do this problem. Um, this last one just needs to be factored first. Okay, you, I mean, you could do it before factoring, but really you want to factor everything beforehand. So let me go ahead and write that one. And this is going to be our last problem. And I might need to do part two, and I will. I'm going to have to do a part two for this video. One over... And then factored form, we're going to put it into two uh, binomials because it's a trinomial. And then we have r, r, and then we're going to have minus 5, minus 2. So what is our least common multiple here? Our least common multiple that we're going to multiply everything is r minus 2 and r minus 5. Okay, again, our least common multiple needs to be something that all of the denominators are factors of. And since I see an r minus 2 here and r minus 2... I just have to make sure if there's an r minus 2 and an r minus 5, I have to multiply it by both of those. So I go ahead and do that. So on the top, I have r minus 2, r minus 5, because that's times 1. r minus 2, r minus 5, s times 1, equals 
6 times r minus 2. I should have wrote the other one first. Let me show you now, sorry. Okay, so then we have the 6, we have this 1, we have this 1 over r minus 2, over r minus 2, r minus 5, and then r minus 2. The whole point of doing multiplying by this again was so that we could cancel. Because it's the least common multiple, each one of these has a factor to cancel out to get rid of these denominators. So this one reduces, this one reduces, and what are we left with? We're left with r minus 5, forgot the sign, plus 1 equals 6 times r minus 5. So now we're just going to simplify. Well, first I would distribute this. We get 6r minus 30 equals uh, r minus 4. I'm going to subtract r from both sides. I get 5r minus 30 equals negative 4. I'm going to add 30 to both sides. I get 26 equals 5r. Um, and then I divide by 5. So I get r equals 26 over 5. I forgot to check for extraneous solutions. I'm so sorry. Again, always check for extraneous solutions. In this case, we're going to set this is going to be r equals 2. R cannot equal 2 because that would make that go to 0. And then uh, it can't equal 5 because that would make that go to 0. We're good. It's not either of these. And so our answer is R equals 26 over 5. That's the basics of it. We're going to do more advanced problems in the part 2 of this video. Hope you enjoyed. Keep watching. See you soon.